And hi there, and welcome to episode eight of David Icke, The Dot Connector. So without further ado, David Icke. Yeah, eight you? of nine. Eight of nine. Rich, so um, there's one more to come in which I will um, put everything that we've talked about uh, since this series started into context of what is happening today. It's been a fascinating series so far. So well, I what I want to do today, um, because it's been a, a progression, um, the dot leads to dot leads to dot. And uh, the last one, Dot Connecting 7, was about basically archontic entities, not human, uh, in, in their prime form, not even in form, just energetic awareness in a very distorted state, which um, the ancients have talked about in endless cultures throughout known human history. And I talked about the fact that um, these entities feed off human low vibrational uh, emotion, all based around the key emotion or the key, uh, the key state of fear. Kia, fear, there you go. <laughs> um, and I've got a, a series of images in this program which were put together uh, for me by my great um, artist friend Neil Haig. And this is the first one, um, look. which is um, symbolizing the, the structure of human control. And you'll see that four letter word that controls the world, fear. Uh, very dominant and appropriately so. So you have these, um, these entities which the ancient Gnostics called the Archons, but the uh, people who believe in, in, in Islam call the Jinn, that Christians call the demons, it's all the same thing. And they um, manipulate human society through a network of bloodlines uh, which are hybrid it's part human and part, I'll use the word, archon for this force. And so we come down into human society and it is controlled, you can symbolize as a, a, as a spider's web or there as a pyramid where the few at the top which connect into this hidden force and are absolutely aware of it and aware that they are vehicles for it and aware of what the agenda is that's being... Um, uh, being sought and being uh, followed. And as you come down uh, the pyramid, you are seeing uh, more and more people in society. But as you come down, they know less and less and less about what's the few at what's the top. Really now, happening, yeah. Which um, actually means that there are great numbers of people, vast numbers of people, who every day are in their work, in their jobs, they are taking actions which are moving towards this global Orwellian slave state without having any idea that that's what they're doing because they don't know how their contribution in and of itself uh, connects with all the other contributions to create uh, a very sinister pattern and a very sinister um, direction. So if we move to the next um, image, this brings us now into what I talked about in the last Dot Connecting show, which is the spider's web. Like I said, you can use a pyramid symbol or you can use the spider's web. The spider in the center of the web is this archontic force. And then around it, as we move into what we might call the human world, the reality that we're aware of with the conscious mind, you move into very, very exclusive secret societies. And the, the upper, upper echelons of this bloodline family network. And as you come out, um, you eventually reach a point where the hidden, the secret societies, um, meet the scene. And that, as I said last time, is where you find organizations like the Bilderberg Group and such organizations, which we know of. But what we don't know, um, in detail anyway, is what they're deciding and, and what their manipulations are in, in detail. But you have great suspicions. You, you really yeah, and, and you can, you can and, and people like me and many others have um, uncovered lots of stuff that, that, that has come out through the Bilderberg Group. But um, there's still a lot we don't know in, like I say, detail. So you come out now from the hidden into the scene and there you see the country is symbolized by the flags. And you, you're now into government agencies, uh, governments, uh, political parties, corporations, the banking system. But even though we're aware of that, what we're not aware of, or most people are not aware of, is that 
in the, the realm of the seen, those organizations are ultimately dictated in terms of what they do and the direction they go and the direction they take the world, they're dictated by the spider in the center of, uh, of, the, of the web. And so let's go to the, let's just come back here for a second and, um, and talk about the bloodlines. Um, these are contic entities that I, I talked about uh, last time and in one or two of the other um, dot connecting programs um, are not in the frequency range of what we call visible light, which is the only tiny, tiny frequency range that we can perceive uh, and decode, in fact, um, while we're in embodiment. Most people, anyway, some clairvoyance and, and visual psychics can get further into the energy field and see what most people can't see, but most people are, are, are in this visible light frequency range. So if these entities who cannot um, enter this reality, at least not for long, because of the frequency and the atmospheric um, incompatibility, if they're going to manipulate this reality, they have to have, um, shall we say, representatives within visible light that can manipulate the world on their behalf. And because they are hybrids, uh, part human in terms of their energetic uh, and genetic state, they are part human, part archon, shall we say. There is a vibrational compatibility between them and this archontic force that there is not in the same way with the general run of the population because, they are f because they're not uh, hybrid in the same way. Um, th there is a greater um, incompatibility of frequency, therefore it's, it, it's not impossible, far from it, but it's more difficult for the archontic entities to, if you like, take over their mental and emotional and perception processes and, and dictate their, their perceptions and therefore their behavior. But with these bloodlines, there is a compatibility, so they're much more possessible. And in, in, in simple terms, um, they are genetic vehicles, holographic vehicles for the, this archontic force to manipulate our world while we think we're being, being uh, led and dictated to by people in, in human form, but that's only, only the level of them that we actually see. So um, let's have a look at some of these, um, these bloodlines. Um, when you do the research, and, and you know, I, I have done it extensively, and others have actually specialized in this area of bloodlines, um, and you find that the people at the top of politics and the corporate world, the banking system, global media ownership level, uh, and, and all these institutions that dictate our lives and dictate the direction the world's going, in, in, in other words, uh, hurtling towards this global fascist dictatorship that Orwell and Aldous Huxley in their, in their books uh, Brave New World in 1984 uh, predicted not from imagination but from insider knowledge by the way. You find that their bloodlines go back um, right far into the ancient world and that there has been an interbreeding all the way through. G question, why, why is it claimed that um, and has it always been claimed that royal bloodlines are special. And then it you, has, yeah. you look into that. Why do they claim yeah. specialness? Why do we have a head of state in Britain today, like there on that, on that picture, who is only head of state, the Queen of England, because of her bloodline, her family line? Because these people uh, consider themselves special, the blue bloods. I was going to say blue bloods, we hear that term all the time. Yeah. Blue uh, blood, yeah. Well, according to, to insiders, the reason they call these people um, blue bloods and some that consider themselves blue bloods but are not officially uh, royal, like the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and, and such like, um, the reason they call themselves blue bloods is um, that in a certain chemical process, uh, their blood uh, carries more copper than the general run of the population and, it, and, it, and under a certain chemical process it turns a bluey green colour. That's what insiders have, have said. So, so w when you look at these people, they appear, and so many others, they appear to come at random um, into these positions of power. But because of the spider's web, they are manipulated into those positions of power, both in terms of wealth and in terms of politics, to carry out a specific agenda. And if we go to the next image, I uh, mentioned um, last time, Rich, 
that you could symbolize the dynamic as a scientist um, standing outside of a sealed tank because he can't um, work with the material inside because it's too dangerous. So the scientist stands outside and uh, puts the long gloves on, which allows him to manipulate and work inside the tank while standing outside of it. Now, if you look at that in frequency terms, the archons um, symbolized here uh, in, in reptilian terms because uh, the reptilian uh, form and the classic grey alien form, according to the ancient Gnostic writings, which I talked about last time, uh, they're the two main forms that these archons take, these jinn, these demons, whichever direction you're coming from. That, that's the form they take most when, when, when they do come into a state that we can actually, um, actually see them. And so the, the gloves um, of the scientist, symbolically, are these bloodlines because uh, the bloodlines uh, are there to be possessed and controlled and dictated to mentally and what passes for emotionally um, to manipulate the direction of this world to suit um, where this archontic force um, uh, wants to take us. Now, if we um, then um, look at this and, and, and really bring this into the, the daily world that, that we um, perceive, I asked Neil Haig to, uh, to knock out this, um, this uh, graphic uh, for me. It's one of a few um, of the same type. And, you know, when you research this in detail, you find that the, 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 wherever you look in terms of all the different areas of society, which you see um, mentioned there, and there are many others, um, when you do the research and you follow the, 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 the people involved, you normally end up, in the end, with things like Satanism and with things like well, secret societies, etc. And this um, graphic brilliantly symbolizes where all roads lead to and all roads lead from. So you have this archontic force, the spider in the center of the web. That's what Satanism is worshipping and interacting with. That's what religion is symbolizing with, with, with the Old Testament God, which actually, if you go back to the original writings, it's gods, plural, not God, um, in the original writings. Um, pedophilia, I mentioned last time how pedophilia is and why it's connected to Satanism because it's the, the way that these entities feed off the energy of children, the way I described last time. Then you look at all these areas, politics, banking, uh, big pharma, big pharmaceutical. In the end, they, in this pyramidal spider's web uh, structure, in the end, what's dictating the direction and the existence of all these different fundamental aspects of society in terms of dictating what happens, they all lead to the same uh, force. And um, what we'll do um, after the break is we'll have a look at um, some of these uh, different sections of that graphic in detail and talk about how in the end the same force is dictating them all, whether it's politics, banking, religion or whatever. Brilliant stuff, David. We'll take a quick break then. When we come back, we'll have uh, the second part of David Ike Dot Connector. Back in a minute. Now, welcome back to the second part of episode eight of David Ike Dot Connector. Remember, go to davidike.com and also go to thepeoplesvoice.tv to see earlier episodes. David, back to you. Okay, well. We saw all those major parts of society on that, that graphic, which not only dictate the direction the world goes, they overwhelmingly dictate the perception of people. And from perception comes action, or allowing the authorities to take actions, um, supporting them or not opposing them, because you have been persuaded that action is necessary because of your perception of the situation. So, you know, my, my new book's called The Perception Deception because that is absolutely what this uh, conspiracy is. There you go. It's a deception of perception. And here we have those institutions that are fundamental in 
manipulating perception. So let's now look at some of these um, elements of that, that, that uh, collective graphic uh, in detail. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, this is secret societies, religions, and Satanism, which all, again, in the end, at the peak of their pyramids, at the, at the, the inside, uh, deep in the shadows, the bottom of the rabbit hole, they all uh, worship and are dictated by and following the, the uh, agenda of this archontic force. Now, in terms of Satanism, they absolutely know this. When they do their uh, rituals, they are interacting with the gods, as they were known in the ancient world, this archontic force. Um, and they absolutely know. Then you go into the secret societies. Those secret societies um, I mentioned earlier, very, very close to the spider, the really exclusive of exclusive secret societies, um, they know that they're worshipping this archontic force and carrying out the, if you like, the, the, the mandate, the agenda of this uh, force. But as you go lower down the degrees in the secret societies, um, they know less and less and less of what they're really um, uh, serving because they, as, as the, the nature of a degree, uh, say the, the, the Freemasons, the vast majority of Freemasons are in the bottom three levels of degree. At that level, you are clueless, unless you're a, a big time insider working their way up, um, you are clueless about what is actually at the top of the pyramid. You only know what they tell you. And then you go to a, the higher degree and a higher degree, and as Freemasons have told me, and ex-Freemasons, um, when you get to the higher degrees, they tell you something different to what they told you lower down. It's all the manipulation of perception again. So the, the vast majority of people, if you take the, the secret societies in general, they are not aware of what's at the top of the pyramid and what's, what this force, this, this uh, grand architect of the universe, the Freemasons call it, this architect of the universe, what that really is. And it's this archontic force, as I explain in detail in the books. And then we come to religion. And most people following religions do, ha do ha not know in the slightest what the force that they are worshipping really is. They, they think it's some some god of the Bible, or a, a god of the Quran, or, or god of, of Hinduism, or, or whatever. But in the end, what they're doing is giving their energy, as I explained in the last Doc Connector, um, they're giving their energy through their focus on the, the deities to this force which feeds off, off human uh, emotional uh, energy. And if you look at religion, it brings me back again to um, the whole thing about uh, perception manipulation. How many people live their lives because, um, in a certain way, because their religion tells them that? Uh, and when you uh, look at any religion, they take this same basic structure. You've got people, usually men, overwhelmingly men, usually in frocks, and they stand there as the arbiter um, and the middlemen between the deity, God, actually these archontic entities operating outside of human sight, and the congregation. So the congregation uh, is, you know, if you like, communicating with, with their deity uh, uh, through these men in frocks. And you, whether you go to the synagogue, whether you go to the mosque, whether you go to the church, whether you go to the temple, you have this same structure where the hierarchy of the church, the religion, dictates the belief systems of the congregation. Because if you don't accept that, then you're not a Christian, you're not a Hindu, you're, you're, you're not uh, uh, carrying out the Jewish religion as you should. But in the end, that same uh, force is what they're worshipping. And what religions are, they are belief systems which give you such a narrow band of possibility, of possible perception of reality, perception of self, 
because if it's not between the covers of some holy book, then it can't be true. Otherwise, it would be in there. And you can't say that, even though you're backing it up with evidence, because if that was true, this would tell me that, and it's telling me the opposite. So it's all... I've uh, described for a long time religion as the greatest form of mind control ever invented, and it is. Um, but while you can appreciate that Satanism and, and secret societies with their strange rituals and religion, with their rituals, it's just... I, 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 People won't like this, but, but I call religion Satanism light because if you um, look at things like the Eucharist and the, the, the drinking of the blood and the, the eating of the, of the flesh as a, as a biscuit or red wine or whatever, it's just Satanism light because the Satanists do the real thing. But it all goes back to ancient Babylon and beyond, whether it's the religions, whether it's the secret societies, whether it's Satanism, you can take it all back to the same source. We talked about the parting of the seas in the papers the other day, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, all, all the similar stories, and yeah. they're all the same it, it, along the way. Exactly. Um, so so <clears throat> we have the parting of the, the Red Sea so that, you know, the Israelites could escape from the Pharaoh. And then in the, the, the Hindu belief system, you have the parting of the river to allow Krishna and co. to um, escape from their enemies. You find the same thing all over the place. You've got Moses found in the, 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 the bulrushes um, in, in a basket. And I think it's King Sargon um, in um, Babylon and, and back to Sumer. That story was told in, in, in basically the same way. They're all the same stories. Um, and they just are given different names and put in different historical settings. Um, same with Jesus, I have to say. So it's not, however, you, like I say, you would expect secret societies and religions and, and, and Satanism to, to, to operate in a certain way and, and maybe fo focus on a certain force although most people in religion don't, think, don't know it's the force that they're really focusing on. But this applies also to the, if you like, everyday institutions like politics and, and banking. We've got a, a graphic here from, from Neil which um, pulls that together. At the bottom there, it's just off the screen, that says uh, Satanism like the others. Now, if you do the research into major politicians uh, in countries all over the world, you find again and again, as, as I have, that invariably uh, three things come up. N not three things for everybody all the time, but these are the common themes. They're involved in secret societies, yes, because it's through secret societies that um, the coordination is achieved covertly to, to make sure a corporation, a government, uh, a media operation will sing from the same song sheet in terms of pushing the world in a certain direction. Um, uh, you find, uh, too, that invariably the major ones, the really significant ones, are, are involved in Satanism. And many of them are involved in paedophilia, which, um, as I've said and explained at greater length in other Dot Connecting shows, um, is uh, connected to this archontic force that has this uh, desire, most of all, to feed off the energy of children before puberty because of, of what that energy is before that that transformation uh, uh, happens. So if we look at um, politics, we see different political parties. But in the end, although most people, the vast majority in politics will not know this, they're actually being dictated to by the same force. Great example. Um, in the United States, you had um, boy George Bush. And of course, like his father and his grandfather, members of the Skull and Bones Secret Society over the road from, from Yale University. Um, exactly the blueprint that I'm talking about. And they'd be into Satanism as well, have, have no uh, question uh, about that. Um, and so you had Bush, and he was controlled in his uh, years as president. I mean, you know, I mean, did anyone think he was running the country? <laughs> uh, uh, what? Um, by a group that was actually well documented in the mainstream media and in great detail in my books um, called uh, the neocons or neoconservatives. Um, and then um, over the other side, he was replaced by uh, Barack Obama. And there's a network of people that run the Democrat Party, which I give the name Democons. Now, this is the key. 
The Democons and the neocons that control the two major parties in the United States then answer to the same force here. And that takes you into the center of the spider's web, if you like, to the spider. So it doesn't matter what uh, person or what apparent party they represent uh, in the White House or Downing Street or anywhere else. They're following the same agenda. And what has happened over the, the years now is that people have started to see that it doesn't matter who you vote for, the same things go on seamlessly. You know, I mean, in so many ways, um, Obama was promoted as the man who was going to change everything Bush did, and he's been Bush on bloody steroids. Why? Because they're answering to the same force, the force that puts them in there. I mean, do you think people like Goldman Sachs and, and, and you know, the, 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 the Morgan banking... Uh, uh, organizations and all these major corporations um, break records in um, funding Obama's election campaigns because he's then going to go in and do things for uh, the people that, on, yeah. th 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 that are not good for the people funding him. I mean, please, it's all manipulated. So politicians push us in this direction because the major ones are, uh, and, and indeed, uh, under, under them in the pyramid, all of them in the end, nearly all of them, are pushing us in a certain direction. The major ones know that, ones below don't know that, but do it anyway because it's good for the career or whatever to tow the party line. So politics changes le law, changes legislation, changes society. But nothing really in society as it is today dictates human choice dictates human possibility, dictates human enslavement more than money. And, you know, when I talked in the, in the last Doc Connector about uh, the manipulation of, of, of the world by these archontic entities and that the banking system was um, fundamental to that, remember I, I read that, um, uh, that quote from that um, Swiss banker was quoted in a Russian magazine. It was talking about the, how these major bankers are Satanists and pedophiles and, and all that. Absolutely fits uh, the structure uh, that I'm talking about uh, here. So what they've done is they've created a system of money. This has overwhelmingly come through the house of Rothschild, who are big time close to the spider. And they have created a system which is taken seriously, and only because it's taken seriously can it exist, in which you create money that actually doesn't exist, called credit, and then you charge people interest on it. And by the manipulation of that so-called you know, fiat system of money, it allows the few, the tiny few, I mean, we're talking not just about the 1% these days, we're talking about the less than 1%. The less than 1%, these people I'm talking about in this structure, um, these um, archontic hybrids. And as a result of creating the money system in the way that they have, they have been able to exchange money that doesn't exist called credit for the wealth of the freaking world, the resources of the world, the companies, the, the corporations. Yes, even governments who are up to their neck in debt to this um, to this structure of uh, banking. So when you put together through this structure that I'm talking about, the fact that the politicians are controlled by the same force that control the banks and the bankers, you can now see very clearly why legislation has been passed by the politicians that's allowed the world to be basically handed to the banks and the bankers, because it's all controlled or manipulated. And then we come to the media. The archontic bloodlines own the media. I mean, the reason the People's Voice was created was to challenge this uh, merciless, incessant um, onslaught of disinformation and misinformation and suppressed information, biased information coming through the mainstream media. To do what? To do what? 
to manipulate and program the perceptions of the population. So the population see the world as this crowd uh, need them to see it. If a tiny few, and these are at the center of this, a tiny few, that they can manipulate more than 7 billion people. So the media and programming people <coughs> through targeted information that gives a certain view of the world and self and keeping out of the public domain information that will give people a wider perception of possibility. That is absolutely fundamental to this plan unfolding for the fascist control of a slave uh, race which we are in so many ways but not a patch on where they want to take us. That's absolutely fundamental. And then if we're talking about perception, well, let's see if we can get hold of the kids three or, three or four years after they leave the womb. Let's see if we can get control of their minds from then into their teenage years. And let's reward them through exams, passes, if they tell us what we've told them to believe about the system, and let's punish them with not passing and with being marginalized I and mean, we've been given uh, uh, diagnoses of um, attention deficit disorder and we'll give them Ritalin or something to shut their minds down. Let's see if we can get away with that. Let's see if we can get hold of, of young minds from the earliest possible age and five days a week at least bombard them with the version of the world and reality that you want them to be as adults. Well, they've done it. These are the people behind it, and they've done it. We call it the education system. So when you put together the programming potential of a 24-7 media banging out disinformation and, uh, to program the minds of the population, and you've got young people from three or four years of age into teenage years, um, not only having that, all the time telling them what to think and what to believe and what's real and not real but actually an education system five days a week that is telling them the same and what basically unless they uh, break out of the the program and open their minds to their true consciousness um, what chance have they got of seeing it so all roads lead to this archontic force in the center of the the web and it's been pursuing an agenda through our timeline for thousands and thousands of years at least to bring about a society in which humans are no more than technologically controlled computer programs living their lives uh, believing their perceptions all of which are in ways that are externally manipulated and programmed Let's pause there. Fascinating stuff. This this is David Icke, Dot Connector, episode eight. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with the final part. Back in a minute. Now, you're welcome back to the final part of this episode of David Icke, Dot Connector. By the way, this is, you didn't ask me to do this. I've got to stress this. This is The Perception Deception um, by David Icke. It is an absolutely mammoth tome. It's huge and it's packed full of fantastic uh, researched information is that um, you really should have. And if you want to get a copy of it, uh, first of all, go to davidike.com. Great stuff. It really is. It is. Because I've read it. I know the author. <laughs> um, I... And brilliantly illustrated by Neil as well, I should say. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I, I, I'm going to be controversial now. Go on. Which, 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 is my, which is my want. <laughs> I've got a long felt want. Uh, I'm going to talk about Zionism, or what I call Rothschild Zionism. This is the next in the, the, the graphics that we're going to see. Now, um, this is so misunderstood, it's extraordinary, because people don't do any research. First of all, Zionism is equated with Jewish people. Not the same thing. In so many ways, not the same thing. Zionism is, in its, if, in, in its public expression, it's basically a political movement. It's a, a belief in the uh, 
right for Jews to have a homeland in uh, Israel, what we now call Israel. Um, but although most Jewish people will support Zionism because that's how they've been brought up, actually um, there are some uh, significant numbers of Jewish people who vehemently oppose Zionism and, and there are organizations set up just to do that. Uh, but I had, I had another word to it, Rothschild Zionism. And Rothschild Zionism takes us beyond the, the public expression as a, if you like, a political movement uh, uh, and a, a, a belief in you know, the, the homeland for Jews in Israel. It takes us into what Rothschild Zionism really is, and that's a secret society. It's a secret society at its core, which connects into all those other secret societies and worships the same force. Not least, I mean, the, the Old Testament God, you know, the one that wanted war and yeah, pestilence all time, and yeah. all these horrible things. Well, uh, that, is the, that is this archontic force. Um, and I call it Rothschild Zionism because uh, it was created by the House of Rothschild. And what you find is a, 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 a shocking ratio of Rothschild Zionists to positions of power, key positions of power, compared with the Jewish population. So if you take the Jewish population of America, it's about 2%, maybe slightly less, but say 2%. But the uh, ratio of those people to positions, key positions of power is extraordinary by comparison. Now you take, the, take, take this um, uh, in, um, in, into consideration here. Nothing like all that 2% will be Zionists. A fraction of that 2% will be what I call Rothschild Zionists. They're the people that are aware that it's a secret society and it's serving the web just like the other secret societies are serving the web, but actually a very, very, uh, it's very, very fundamental to that secret society network. And you start to see why uh, there are so many, what people perceive as Jewish people, but actually it's not about Jewish people in general. This is the big uh, mistake. It's about Rothschild Zionists. And when you look at the, the, the ratio of Rothschild Zionists to positions of power, it's not shocking. It's, it's, it's beyond the imagination. I'll give you an example. Um, <clears throat> If you look at 9-11, before, during, and after that attack, Rothschild Zionists, and you, you get what I'm talking about when I say that now, this, this small minority that are actually aware that Rothschild Zionism is a secret society and what the agenda is, the same as the other secret societies I'm talking about. When you look at the ratio of Rothschild Zionists to positions of power, influence, and decision-making before, during, and after 9-11, again, it is extraordinary. And when you look in key government positions, in The Perception, Deception, and in, in, in other books, I've highlighted this um, and, and, and named the names and the positions. But let's just take an example. Clearly, the Federal Reserve which is the allegedly central bank of America, but actually is a cartel of private banks controlled in the end by the Rothschilds, um, and dictates the uh, American economy. Take into account, like I say, that 2% or, or slightly less of the American population is Jewish, and Rothschild Zionists, um, in full knowledge of what they're doing, will be a small minority, very small minority of that 2%. Between 1987 and today, these have been the chairman of the Federal Reserve, dictating Federal Reserve policy. Alan Greenspan, Rothschild Zionist, uh, for a long, long time. Ben Bernanke, Rothschild Zionist. His vice chairman of the Fed, Janet Yellen, Rothschild Zionist. <clears throat> when Bernanke, uh, recently left, he was replaced by the current head of the Federal Reserve, Janet Yellen, and her vice chairman is Stanley Fisher, former governor of the Bank of Israel and a dual Israel American um, citizen. Take into account also that 
the checks and balances that stop the catastrophic consequences of unfettered greed in the banking system and the financial system in general were removed systematically by um, overwhelmingly uh, the Fed, um, Alan Greenspan. And he did it in league with people like Clinton Treasury Secretaries like Robert Rubin, Rothschild Zionist, and Larry Summers, Rothschild Zionist, and another uh, one called um, uh, Geithner, Timothy Geithner, Rothschild Zionist. When the uh, destruction and the dismantling of those checks and balances had led to the inevitable, which was the crash of 2008, in came Obama and he made Timothy Geithner his Treasury Secretary and uh, Larry Summers another uh, major player in his economic response to that crash. And what was that response? We must, as happened in this country and around the world, we must give hoes indeed money which the, which the population is responsible for at the banking system, which, which is, is where they come from. Yeah. And as a result of that, we've, we've seen governments say, we've got no money, we've got to have an austerity program. And so now we're seeing people crushed as a result of that unbelievable transfer of wealth, all orchestrated by these people. And um, so if you look at the Rothschild Zionist, uh, and it goes further back, but control of the Fed, it went through the end of Reagan Bush, which is actually Bush Reagan in truth in terms of power. Um, that's Father Bush. It went through Father Bush when he was president, officially. It went through the Clinton years um, uh, uh, with, with, um, with Greenspan, who then handed to, to Bernanke. And it's come up to Barack Obama through Bernanke to uh, Janet Yellen, etc. Control of the Federal Reserve all the way through that. And in the... Um, Perception deception. I, I, I just de detailed the financial positions that um, were appointed by Obama when he came in on top of those people. Um, Peter Orzag, Rothschild Zionist, he appointed Director of Office Management and Budget, control of the entire uh, US government budget. Yared Bernstein, Rothschild Zionist, Chief Economist and Economic Advisor to Vice President Joe, Joe Biden. Mary Shapiro, Rothschild Zionist, Chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, we're supposed to police the banking and financial banking. system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary Regulated. Gensler, Rothschild Zionist, Chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Sheila Blair, Rothschild Zionist, Chairman of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And Karen Mills, Rothschild Zionist, Head of the Small Business uh, Administration. And at the same time, when he came to power, Obama's chief of staff, actually Sven Ghali, um, at the White House, uh, was um, Rahm Emanuel, whose father openly uh, talks about being a member of the, uh, the Ergun terrorist group, which helped to bomb Israel into existence. And his chief White House advisor and election campaign manager in both of his election wins was David Axelrod, Rothschild Zionist. So you're talking all those people coming from a, a fraction of 2% of the American po population. And, and there's no conspiracy, there's no manipulation, of course there is. But the point is that Rothschild um, Zionism is a, um, a secret society and because it's been equated with Jewish people as a whole, that's where you get, oh, it's anti-Semitism when you expose this. It's not. It's exposing the truth. But you do understand, and I know because we've had many private conversations, to your credit, you do understand why those who haven't done the research, who may be Jewish, why they get paranoid when, when we discuss this sort of stuff. Um, I mean, they do because the first thing they say is, like you just said there, that's anti-Semitism. He's saying that Absolutely. the Jews are trying to manipulate the world, but of course that's not what you're saying, or well, I've ever said. Organizations like <clears throat> the Anti-Defamation League in America operates worldwide, actually, and B'nai B'rith and these other organizations, they are fronts for the, for the same Rothschild network. And what they do is when, the, when someone gets close to the truth, they're in there 
trying to d d destroy them as anti-Semitic and racist. I've got a racist cell in my body. I think right. racism is juvenile. I because can verify that. This, this is just a holographic projection of, of your, your true uh, energetic uh, self-consciousness. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the idea that you, 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 you see the body as, as kind of, uh, and your, your genetic history is, is kind of relevant, just shows how far from a, a awareness of your true self you really are. It's nonsense. But if we, if we go to this, this final graphic now, um, and that's big pharma, big pharmaceutical. I could put um, quite easily big biotech. I could put big oil. I could put uh, big uh, banking, big media, as I have in the earlier ones. I could put any of them there. These are the corporations. The corporations who are, thanks to uh, things like the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, and other trade agreements are being given more power than governments. And these corporations, at their inner core, although the vast majority of people um, who are working for them, will have, of course, no idea. They're just trying to earn a living, to you know, look after their, themselves and their families, their children. But at the core uh, of these corporations, they are... Um, in the same secret societies as the politicians, they're in the same uh, satanic networks as the major politicians and uh, uh, bankers, and they're worshipping the same uh, force. So you can see, um, and, and you know, the perception deception is nearly a thousand pages. You know, this is not me making it up. All the back backup information in great detail is 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 in there. You can see that all roads lead to the same thing, and so you see when. People say, um, how can a few control the world? There's too many people. It's actually quite straightforward, so long as you've got this structure in place. And it's based on a simple uh, technique, which organizations like the CIA, etc., call compartmentalization. You only let people know within the structure as much as they need to know to make their contribution. So the higher you go up the structure, the more you need to know to make your contribution in manipulating those below you. And, but it's only when you get to the peak of these pyramids or the center of, these, uh, of this um, spider's web that you meet the people that absolutely know everything about what's happening and the force that's behind it. And crucial to increasing the power of the few over the many is to constantly centralize decision making. And when I say that um, this force has been working towards um, this state of transhumanist, fascist, Orwellian enslavement of the global population, what I call the Hunger Games Society, I'm going to talk about that in the next Dot Connecting. Um, one of the things has been, one of the processes ongoing through this uh, period has been to centralize decision making in every area of our lives. We, we even, uh, you know, eventually, some time ago now, uh, got a word for it, globalization. What is that? Globalization is the constant centralization of power in every area of our lives. And it's quite simple. If you, the very few, want to dictate to the rest you have to centralize decision making. The more diversity there is of decision making, the more you devolve power, true power, not illusory power, um, the less control any central group are going to have over people. Because you can't keep uh, on top of all the decisions being made. You have to centralize the decision making. So if you look at politics, we have the European Union. We have these partnerships or free trade zones which are centralizing power NAFTA, look at the yeah, NAFTA, look at the European Union for goodness sake you've got enormous uh, v bordering now on total power virtually in the hands of unelected bureaucrats in Brussels then you look at the corporations who are taking over the world's resources they're taking over countries they're dictating the world economy. They're controlling the food chain. They want to, they want to control um, water supplies. They want to own water own supplies. Um, and, and all this is this process of constantly centralizing power. And along with that, 
to absorb all the, the financial wealth in the hands of the few. So the structure they're looking for, what I call the Hunger Games Society, like I say, I'm going to go into this in detail in the, in the, the next Dot Connector, is to have a tiny few, basically those very close to the spider in this structure, owning all the wealth and through the manipulation of money, owning the world's resources, owning the food chain, owning um, uh, access to water. And then under that, or at the bottom of that, the vast majority of people today in a completely slave state, um, including those that are now called middle class. This is why you, you know, you're, you're having this, this, this basically war on the middle class in North America and, and, and in Europe. Um, this slave um, race being dictated to by the few. And the way they're going to impose that, or they're planning to impose that, is the strata in the middle of that structure. And that's the vicious, psychopathic police state which is unfolding by the day. The reason that we're seeing um, the, 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 the greater and greater prevalence of violent, um, uh, uh, abusive, dictatorial uh, administrators of government and people in uniform around the world. While we're, while we're seeing the police becoming more like the military in the way that they're armed and even in their uniforms, uh, is because we're seeing the unfolding of this middle strata of the police state, which is designed to impose the will of the few upon the many. A many that are so disconnected from access to wealth, access to food, independent access, I mean, access to water, access to, to, to the basics of life, that they must do what they say, otherwise the basics of life will be denied. And, and if they don't do what they say and, and, and try to challenge it anyway, that strata of police state is there to impose its will. That's where we're going. Now, do people want to see that happen? Well, it, they're seeing it happen. Do they want to see it reach its conclusion? Because if they do, they should basically do what they're doing now, which is damn all. Knowing about this stuff's not enough. We have to start um, responding to it. And uh, if we don't, then that's, that's what the future um, will be. The future is unfolding so fast now. But there's still seven billion of us. There's still a few behind all this. And this strata of police state isn't quite there yet. So now, last chance corral, ladies and gentlemen, now is the time to start responding and to stop arguing among ourselves, even those people that, that have some idea of what's going on, and start coming together behind, what, no matter what your religion is, no matter what your political belief is, no matter what your culture is, your race is, couldn't care less. But we've got to put those fault lines down and realize that if we don't come together and respond together, then those that survive are going to have a long, long time sitting in a global prison state all the time they want to argue over who has the best political party, not there'll be any then, or the best religion, or the best belief system, or the best house, or the best pair of shoes, best trainers. They'll have all the time in the world. Do people want that? Well, carry on as we are, and they'll get it. Just a good way to end it, David. Thanks very much. We've got to leave it there. That's all we have time for this episode. Um, remember, this is available. The Perception Deception is available from all, um, well, from all good bookshops. It, I'm sure it is, but also at davidike.com and an electronic version of it is available there as well. We'll see you next week for the final episode in this series of davidike.connector. Bye for now.